got beat by. Good evening and welcome to the Board of Mayor and Alderman Workshop. It is March 28th, 2024. It's 6.30 p.m. I call this uh, meeting to order. I will have the prayer on Tuesday night and the Pledge of Allegiance will be with Alderwoman Haas. Everyone should have a copy of the minutes from the February 29th workshop, the March 7th regular meeting, and the March 20th special meeting. We will have one presentation on at the actual meeting, and then we'll have departmental reports. Uh, then we will move on to old business, which is second reading ordinance 2024-04, an ordinance to amend the fiscal year 2023-2024 general fund budget. It's a second reading. Does anyone have any questions? And this is an additional $11,000 needed for tools and equipment for the uh, new pumper for the fire department. Moving on to the consent agenda. First, we've got approve or reject city bids and purchases. Uh, number one is request for qualifications and proposal, professional asset management services for the street department. And we have someone from Kimberly Horn who's going to do a presentation for us. Yes. Thank you. We've got our PowerPoint here teed up. Uh, yeah, so thank you. My name is Zach Dufour. I'm with Kimberly Horn. I'm uh, going to speak a little bit about our proposed scope of work for uh, asset management, particularly uh, pavement management program. Um, we have done a lot of work. Hopefully you guys are familiar with the name. We've, um, we've done a, eight, over 80 projects for the city in a wide variety of, of aspects from roadway work to private development work uh, across the city. Um, and so excited to be kind of jumping into a, a new discipline and a new service type for you guys. Um, in, in specific to pavement management, we have a national team that's going to that's gonna work on this program. They've done projects for cities across the country, uh, but they have also worked for uh, Mount Juliet and the city of Oak Hill within Middle Tennessee with the, really the same kind of scope of work, same software system that we're going to use for you all. Um, Pavement management basics. So a lot of cities we've worked for where we've implemented this program, and I'm not saying this is you guys, right? It, it might be, it may not be, but a lot of cities pave roads based on the number of phone calls they get, who screams the loudest, or the streets that are the worst, which is certainly not atypical. Um, but I'm going to kind of go through a little bit more of a strategic approach uh, based on, you know, sort of industry standard for pavement management. Uh, so five five step process uh the the big picture is really to keep the good roads in good condition so it it sometimes throws people for a little bit of a loop when they, they you know they ask questions like well, how come we're not paving the worst street in town uh, and i'll speak to that a little bit more uh later on so general scope of work we've got three kind of sections pre-field uh, is the mapping component. So we're going to gather data. We're going to collect as much as we can from the history from the city. We're going to map the whole city, map the streets that we're going to that we're going to evaluate and, and analyze. Then we're going to go in the field. We're going to do the data collection, uh, and then the post field process is analyzing that data and and giving you guys reports and recommendations. Uh, the expected outcomes are an, annual budget targets, and then eventually a capital improvement program for for street repairs. Okay, so basics to pavement management, the challenge is always too much work, not enough money, right? Simple. So our program is how do we optimize that and how do we prioritize the, the work that needs to be done that we know we probably can't do everything that we want to do. Um, so five-step process starts with what do we have. That's the data collection part, right? Understanding where we are, how many streets, what condition they are, Go, obviously get into condition. And then when do we need to do the work? The, the next three all kind of go together, right? When do we need to do the work? What work do we need to do? And how much is it going to cost? So really kind of making that list, prioritizing what, when, and how much. Um, bottom line is, again, keep the good roads in good condition. If you fix it now, you're paying less over the life of the project. Um, so this, this is probably the best slide that we, that we use to help kind of explain how, the, how pavement management proper pavement management really works. So if you look at that curve, you really want to prevent doing work down here, where that deterioration curve really starts to take a dive. 
because you're going to be spending four or five times as much to fix that road if you wait until it gets to the bottom of that deterioration curve. If you spend a little bit of money earlier in the life of that pavement, it can extend that pavement for much, much longer, and you never have to spend those large dollars. And so if, if you look at this second curve, which I think is, there we go. So those little spikes that you see, so if you spend a dollar, at, right, that dollar is, is relative, right? A dollar instead of, instead of four to five or six to 10, earlier in the life cycle, it bumps up that condition and it, and it starts that kind of that deterioration over again, right? And so you're, you're avoiding that big drop where you're having to reconstruct an entire roadway, which costs a lot more money. And so the goal is to be able to, over time, get the streets to a, to a condition where we're spending smaller dollars on more streets instead of larger dollars on one or two streets a year. Okay, so starting off with what do we have, right? We're gonna define the network. We're gonna use GIS to map the city. We're gonna start with the network, the street network. Obviously, we're not gonna recommend that you guys go pave a TDOT street, right? We're only gonna focus on, on city streets. Uh, and then we'll break each street into different branches different blocks, so we'll analyze block by block or intersection to intersection, and then sometimes on long stretches, we may even, we may even analyze certain parts so that our, our analysis can be broken up into, into different segments. And then we'll do a historical records review, looking at you know, past paving projects, past deterioration to help us really hone in on how long pavement lasts in, in, this, in the city, you know, based on some cities obviously have more salt and snow removal and things like that. We've got a pretty good idea of Middle Tennessee deterioration curves, but you guys may have some, some local nuances that we'll want to know about. Okay, so then what condition is it in? Field inspections. You see that van that, that we've got in the picture? Um, that's our subconsultant that does all the data collection. So we're, we're not just using a visual observation. This is like super technology. When these guys come out, there's cameras and sensors and all kinds of stuff. That'll drive every street in the whole city and it'll measure cracks. It'll, it'll identify you know, not only cracks, but length of cracks and, and size of cracks and um, potholes and every distress that you, can, that you can think of. And it'll catalog all those for us to kind of take in and analyze um, when we get to that point. So it is, it's really impressive. I would suggest, I'm sure when, when they come out to start, we'll do a demonstration. Um, staff can come out if anybody wants to come out and kind of check it out or see the, the results. We can certainly accommodate that, but it is, it's pretty impressive what they're able to do. Um, we use an ASTM methodology for pavement condition index. So all that data goes in and what comes out is, a, is what we call a PCI. And then we do recommend that you reinspect your roads on a regular basis, three to five years, five to seven years, just to make sure that we're, we're following that deterioration. I mentioned ASTM, so this is an industry standard for uh, pavement condition index. It goes from one to 100, obviously, or sorry, 100 being the best, zero being completely failed, uh, and there's different, there's different classifications for both asphalt and concrete streets. Okay, so as, as I mentioned, all of the input, distress type, severity, quantity, all of that's cataloged, kind of put into the algorithm and out comes uh, a PCI. And you see kind of based on the scale, similar to the graph I showed earlier, you know, going from zero, really, really bad to 100, would, which would be a brand new street uh, and everything in between. Okay, so then, when do I need to do the work, right? Obviously, we, we, I've already mentioned, repairs become more expensive the longer you wait and the older the pavement becomes. We wanna find that sweet spot to balance the cost and the performance. And so this graph kind of shows the earlier in the, in the life cycle of a pavement, you're doing routine maintenance. You might be doing a pavement rejuvenator or a crack sealing or some kind of chip seal or something like that that's, that's much, more, much less expensive and as that pavement life cycle goes on, you're getting into preventative maintenance, rehabilitation, and then reconstruction, obviously. Um, and we have all kinds of different kind of repair techniques that we apply at, at those different levels. So speaking of that, this, um, these are about eight different repair techniques. 
So at number eight, you see is full depth reconstruction where you're tearing up the whole road and you're rebuilding it from scratch. Most expensive happens at the you know, farthest end of the life cycle of a road, all the way up to something that happens earlier just to crack seal or fog seal or put down pavement rejuvenator um, and everything in between. So the, the higher the PCI of a road, the, the, you know, the recommendation we would make would be, would be higher on that list, right? It would be a cheaper, quicker, easier repair as opposed to the lower PCI, you'd be getting into a mill and overlay or a full depth reconstruction. Okay, and so this is sort of one of the main outputs that we have. After we've collected the data, after we've analyzed the data, we're able to run scenarios on all that data. And so we're working with city staff to determine, all right, do we wanna, do we wanna get recommendations based on a certain budget? Do we wanna get recommendations based on a certain condition of our roads? And so we'll run a bunch of different scenarios for you guys. You can see then this is just an example, but PCI today, so we'll be able to tell you, okay, your average condition across the entire city, let's say it's a 62. So we can kind of say, let's maintain, what do we need to do to maintain that 62? Obviously roads are going down, so to maintain it at the same level, we need to be putting money in so that it's, it's even with the deterioration. We can also run, we'll also run a scenario, which hopefully isn't the one you guys pick, but we'll, we'll run a do nothing scenario. So you can see over five to 10 years, how much of an impact that has to the street. <coughs> Excuse me. And then there's budget scenarios. Those are pretty high budgets, right? It might not be 10 or 15 million a year. It might be a couple million a year. But we can run different scenarios to say, all right, if you spend a million, if you spend a million and a half, if you spend two million, here's what your conditions gonna, of the road's gonna do, how, how much you know, it's gonna go up or down. Uh, and then we typically run what we call a, a backlog elimination, which is, really to get the entire city up to a point where we're, where we're averaging good condition, you know, in the 90 to 100 range, just so you can see really how much that would cost. It's, nobody ever really picks that solution or do nothing. It's, it's somewhere in between. Um, but budget driven versus performance driven, we can run both scenarios so you guys can really kind of see how that impacts the, the condition. Okay, and then lastly, all of this data, these algorithms and the scenarios, we put into a, into a program that we developed called DRIVE, Database for Roadway Inventory visual, Visualization and Evaluation. And so it's a web-based program. It's really easy to use, super intuitive. It's got, houses all the data that we collect, all the condition assessments, and then it can house all those different scenarios. So if staff wants to look at, you know, we, we got a little bit more money in the budget, we've got some surplus, what can we do? We can also go in after a paving season and we can update all the streets that were paved and rerun all the scenarios because sometimes after a certain year of paving, the recommendations might change slightly after, you, after we've done some work. And so each year we recommend that you rerun the analysis. Um, and then obviously it's gonna spit out a recommendation for each year of the five or 10 year capital plan. Uh, and then we have to kind of sit down with staff and, and put, the, put the human element on it, right? We, it might say pave Main Street from First Avenue to Third Avenue, and, and city staff might say, oh, "Well, let, let's just do the whole thing. Like it's only one more block. You know that that pavement was better, so it, the system didn't recognize it. But let's just go ahead and do the whole thing because we don't want people calling and asking why'd you leave off this one little section. And so there's always that that judgment call or that you know that that um, element that we want to know from the city." to add on top of the recommendations to see you know, what needs to be done. If there's a utility project coming up and we, you know, maybe we pull a recommendation off the list because we know it's gonna get torn up next year, things like that that the software won't necessarily know. Um, I think that's it. So try to be brief, but if there's any questions, I'd certainly happy to answer them. Just before we open it up for questions, do wanna just mention to the board, this is $61,500. This was discussed at the budget uh, that we approved for this fiscal year. So this is part of the budget. Well, that was something I was going to bring it up. I guess I don't <clears throat> remember it in detail, but so that was approved back last year. Current, current year, yes, sir. The current year. Uh, and we're just now getting around to it. Yes. To me, but anyway, 
I guess uh, I have to uh, refer myself over to Michael. Uh, he would definitely be the person that uh, would tell us if this would be a big help in his work project. Yes, sir, absolutely. So this is something that we started discussing last year, as the mayor had mentioned, um, and it did take some time to establish. There was a lot of discussions internally with staff. We reached out to some other municipalities that were using their service, um, had to get the RFQ together. That took time, got that pushed out, so here we are today. Um, everything I have heard back as far as response that these guys are working with has been great. Um, it, it helps with long-term budgeting, long-term CIP planning, and that's something that we want to establish versus, um, like Zach said, the phone calls, well, our road's bad. Well, no, why'd you pay that one? Because this one over here is worse. This gives us an identified plan that, you know, goes out and determines the areas that are in the most need. I had that on my list of questions about other cities. So I yep. guess that answers that. My next one is how does... Uh, when you go out and that van goes around, looks at things, uh, it comes back with this weather that we have. Does it, uh, any kind of consideration or is that just for us to take it into consideration? Uh, well, you, you mean weather like, like snow and ice and, and rain and actual weather? Okay, yeah. let, me, let me rephrase my question. What time of year do you make that round yeah so it really doesn't matter because you're looking they're evaluating the pavement the the day that they drive it right and so it's not going to get any better it's only going to get worse right and so we're taking a snapshot in time but then we're applying that curve and that curve to tell us how it's going to deteriorate that's when you start to think about weather events and you know freeze thaw and where you are in the in the country the climate and everything like that that goes into the deterioration curve deterioration curves in up north they're going to be much shorter lifespan than what we have here usually our pavement in this area is maybe like 30 25 30 years you know truck traffic will get taken into account total total traffic volume weather conditions all that all that stuff goes into the curve that we develop for the city um, but the, the actual data collection is just at that point. You know, it doesn't really matter when it's, when it's taken, as long as you wouldn't want to do it with snow on the ground, right? As long as you can see the street. Um, but yeah, they'll, they'll mobilize as soon as you guys give us authorization. We'll get them mobilized up here, um, I would think, within, within hopefully a few weeks. Uh, but the overall project, I know you were mentioned in budget year and fiscal year, um, you know, the project will probably take... I won't speak out of turn, but it, it might take six months for us to actually have a plan because we'll go back and forth with staff a little bit and, you know, figuring out the budgets that we want to apply and how much the city wants to spend. And, you know, if we tell them, well, if you spend a little bit more, you get a big, big bang for your buck. So that sometimes takes a little bit of time. We'll have to map it. We'll have to analyze it. Um, I would say I would say about six months. Well, I'm a firm believer in keeping up as opposed to catching up. How come this, as a city you never had nothing? Presented to us like this? Nothing formal like this. We we had developed a, a plan at some point, but it was never a full plan for all city streets. Where this this will do that. Yeah, and I, and I will guarantee the the money that's spent on the on the data collection and the analysis, certainly over the life of the even a five year capital plan will will be saved just based on being much more strategic on how you spend your money. Um, you'll end up with better overall quality pavement and a, and a, and a better plan. You, you might end up spending as much as you did before, you'll, but you'll get, you'll get much more out of it. And over the long, the long run, it's, it's definitely a cost savings for the city. And this gives Leeds back some time because um, he will go around to different roads and rank them and evaluate them himself. But, I mean, this, this brings the science into it. Well, like I said, I'd have to turn my opinion over to Michael, because this is his, you know, and you said the other cities have said that it's worked out good for them. And yes, sir, that's correct. Help their departments and. Yep, and that's planning. Um, so I'm 100% I'm I'm all in. For the Who service. coordinates the actual paving? Is that 
part of what you do? No. No, ma'am. We would still use that would be our, our con bids. contractors that okay. have the bids. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we, we'll certainly work with the city to help come up with the list of projects. But then it, that, that, at that point, the, pro the projects would be done as if they sure. were done in the past. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. And that fee is once a year? No, there, there's a small fee to, um, to keep up with the software. But that initial fee is really just every time every time you redo the data collection and analysis. So if you wanted to redo the data collection and the and the evaluation every five to seven years, that it would be about the same fee every five to seven years. But I think the the annual fee is only twenty five hundred. Okay, I'm gonna say so two thousand. But the big fee would be pretty much up to you whether or not it needed to be done or not. Yes, sir. Um, and, and like I said, the software will be new to me. But once we get established and we learn it, it may be something that we can do internally, or it may be something that we need to reach back out in five years and get additional assistance. So that, that would be to be determined. Any other questions? So um, were there any other companies that y'all reached out to? Well, we did the RFU. We received one response, which mm -hmm. was Kimley Horn. We did um, receive some questions and some interest, but nobody submitted a package, a bid package. Okay. And then... Base services, is there anything that would come up? I just, I've, I just had nightmares from a previous job where they did a changeover and they did base services, and it was a nightmare. Mm -hmm. So when it says base services, that's everything that you said in your presentation. Yes, absolutely. And, I mean, there's certainly always other things we could help the city with, <laughs> right? Um, mm -hmm. The question about paving, you know, we, we've helped coordinate paving projects before. Obviously, that's not included in the base. But, but yeah, the data collection, the mapping, the analysis, the reporting, uh, we, I think we, we've even got training in there to train the staff on, on, the, on the software and the program. So everything I talked about tonight would be included in that base. So no, su no surprises. Right no, now. No right now. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to number two, purchase subscription plan for automated license plate recognition system. Mm -hmm. And um, this is essentially $23,950 for a five-year subscription plan. And essentially, with phase one of our LPRs, um, there wasn't a subscription plan included in that. Um, for phase two, it was. And so um, they did not, of course, invoice us for number two until um, just recently. And it, phase two was allocated last fiscal year. So um, there will have to be a budget amendment. And I believe that's down here under new business. But this is... Um, this is what we need for our LPRs. Does anyone have any questions? Moving on to B. Approved contract with the State of Tennessee Department of Safety and Homeland Security for participation in the Tennessee Advanced Communication Network. And um, this is $200 per radio. And... Um, this is to uh, renew that contract. Um, our ask, because I don't see it in my summary sheet, how many radios do we have? I have no idea. And was this part of the budget? Well, we, we pay an annual fee already. It's the same price. The price has not gone okay. up. So, yes, it would be in our budget. Any other questions? Moving on to C, approve agreement with Guardian Alliance Technologies Incorporated to perform pre-employment background investigations on applicants for the police department. And this is just like it sounds. It is background investigations for applicants for our police department. Um, the costs for this service are shown in our exhibits, which you should be able to see on... Uh, let's see here. It says page 77 of your packet. But it's based on agency size for that fee. Does anyone have any questions about this? 
D, approve change order number two for the professional services agreement with Johnson & Bailey Architects for the Laverne Fire Station 41 for geotechnical services. This is a change order for $35,842. That would modify the total contract. Um, this, would, um, this would cover additional funding for the third-party testing for the site and the building elements. Um, it will add about another month for the construction administration services, which are being supplied. Does anyone have any questions? Hey, Chief, when are we looking at opening? <laughs> you knew I'd ask. Yes, ma'am, I did. Uh, part of what you see here is covering which information in change order number four. Um, because of some things that we have made changes to in the contract and in the construction project itself, we're going to be delayed by 28 days. Uh, there's going to be a contract extension and change order number four for that. So we also have some delays in our front apparatus bay doors. Um, they are slated to ship June 17th. So we're hoping to have a grand open ceremony by the end of June. What we're hoping for in time for july 4th yes ma'am okay thank you yes ma'am and chief already hit on it but approved change order number four with romac incorporated for the laverne fire station 41 um, this is uh deducting from our contingency eighty thousand seven hundred sixty four dollars and um this is uh for upgrading electrical systems in the training room um, adding some emergency lights, additional electrical services, um, and then some issues as far as with the sinkhole remediation. Anyone have any questions? Moving on to new business, first reading ordinance 2024-05, an ordinance to amend the fiscal year 2023-2024 general fund budget. And this is for the LPR system that we were just discussing under the consent agenda. Does anyone have any questions? Seeing none, we're going to move on to number eight, resolution 2024-07, resolution to amend the employee handbook. And Andrew, would you like to walk us through every single <laughs> minuscule detail of what we're changing I know you know you don't want that. No, um, I'm happy to to go over, um, you know, any of the high points, or if any of you have specific questions on any of the summary sheet, I can start with those too. I think just give us a high level if there's okay. anything uh, specific you want to touch on. Um, I know the public can hear it, but it's sure it's updating our document, and it will become a regular thing. I, I believe each year to update. Yeah, I've said this before on other handbook revisions, but this is a living document. You know, any place you work, there's a handbook, and it's always changing. Um, so, <clears throat> in this particular version, we're uh, adjusting a couple of things. Um, I'll point out that we've added a couple of new sections, and um, I'll, the first one I'll point out is in 7.5. This is the section that deals with pay, and we've added some language in that, uh, two new paragraphs, one for overpayment and one for recovery. So in situations where we have um, you know, uh, paid an employee the wrong amount of money, obviously when it is that we've underpaid, we just simply make the correction and move on. But when we've overpaid, we didn't have any language that supported a process for that, so we're adding that language into the handbook um, and it's it's outlined there but just a high level view if an overpayment is $100 or less we will simply make the adjustment automatically on the next paycheck if it's $100 or more we will call a meeting with the employee and walk through what that number is what happened how we got there and then what the process would be um, for recovery of those funds that's in section uh, 7.5 um, in section 8.7, um, in our last handbook revision, um, Evan and I spent time talking about, you know, sections related to feedback and performance of, uh, in the behavioral category for our employees, and, and he pointed out to me that we did not have language that handled insub insubordination as a category. 
So we've added that to the handbook in um, section 8.7, just to simply call out what that is and when it would come into play. Um, section 13.5, this is a major revision. I will highlight this one for you because we spent some time in a previous board meeting talking about um, the accident review board. So the review board started after your approval um, over a year ago. The board consists of seven or eight uh, employees who meet on a monthly basis to review accidents that happen within the city. Um, and we have two general categories, right, that we, we look at. After we review the, the information on the accident, that the board makes a determination if it was preventable or non-preventable. If the accident was non-preventable, then the board simply signs the document, we move right on to the next review, right? Because if an accident happened uh, because of something that the employee couldn't have avoided, that's understandable. We obviously have had significant conversations about the fact that a lot of our accidents are preventable. And <clears throat> so in a meeting that I held with administration, fire, police, and um, our fleet maintenance team, we met to talk about what we had done so far in the process of reviewing accidents, what the impact of those steps have been, and kind of are there additional things that we can do. One of the things that we implemented was driver training. So last year we put um, Sergeant Eubank and Thomas Daniel through a professional driver training course. They um, trained a number of our staff last year uh, on that course. We will pick up those trainings again uh, next month uh, for those who didn't get a chance to participate in that. That course focuses uh, pretty significantly on backing up as a, as a highly uh, a pointed out area of accidents. Um, for the most part, a lot of our accidents are when the car is in reverse and um, unfortunately we tend to hit things that don't move. So part of that training is to help identify different ways to approach backing up. Um, and so that training hopefully uh, will help our process. The Accident Review Board then last year started to hold, add some accountability, right? So if you have an accident the first time, here's what happens. If you come the second time and the third time, and so there was a, an entire guidelines that, that you all passed and that we have been following. In a conversation with uh, the department heads, uh, specifically Chief Mays, uh, we, we focused on the fact that the police department, A, has you know a lot of drivers, right, in their, um, in their department compared to some other departments in the city, and that a vast majority of our preventable accidents are coming from that particular department. And he and I talked and he felt um, that we needed a revision to the Accident Review Board to hold his department accountable at a different level. So we talked through what that could look like and in the handbook um, we've, we've added some language and I'll just, I'll just share it with you um, because this, is, this will take effect you know, if you pass this. It's beginning uh, March of 24, which I'll revise to April by the time this is passed, April of 24 through February of 25, employees of the Laverne Police Department will be recommended on the following point structure. So there's a point structure that's attached to each accident. And based on the points that are assessed by the Accident Review Board, that is what the recommended feedback is, right? So one of the things we talked about before, just a reminder, is we wanted to remove the um, subjectivity to discipline. We wanted to say, if you did these things in your accident, you got these points, and if your points totaled this, this is what happens, right? And it's consistent each and every time. So previously on a first accident, um, an employee was given a counseling form that is technical language for there's a, a conversation that happens between employee and supervisor and it's a follow-up to an email, right, that says we talked about this, here's what happened, note that you shouldn't do it this way, and, and move forward. That step is being recommended to be eliminated for the police department for the next one year period. And first accidents would start with a written warning as opposed to a counseling form. 
Um, following that written warning on the second accident, your first step is a one shift unpaid suspension. Um, on a third preventable accident, um, you, you start at two days off and it progresses from there based on your points. Um, there is still language in the uh, recommendation as was before that um, at a certain level of accidents, your uh, take home car privileges would be removed um, <clears throat> for a period of one year. That's citywide, right? That's not something that's just specific to the police department. That is citywide and that's in the policy that we're using right now. Thankfully, we've never had anybody that has reached that level um, and I hope that to be the case. If Chief Mays was here, I'm sure he would say this. <clears throat> this change is, is not necessarily meant to be targeted or, or um, extra harsh toward a particular department, but just an acknowledgement that over 90% of our preventable accidents are from one department. And he felt like there was a need, and I, I agree with that, that those first accidents need to have a little more teeth behind what happens than just a conversation. Um, I've said this uh, publicly before, which is um, I think folks tend to drive a little different if they view it as their own money as opposed to somebody else's money. Um, and so when there's a, a stiffer uh, response from a feedback standpoint that affects someone's pocketbook, hopefully they'll rethink um, some of those maneuvers or, or backing up that they're doing. So any questions on that? particular it, item well Andrew I know we talked about this yesterday um, but I do want to uh, bring Evan in just to make sure um, as far as from a legal standpoint with that change just being for the police department that legally it is, is not muddy water for us no, you, we have the ability to apply that to any department we want to so okay um, the other changes in the handbook um, all are, are small in nature, reflect um, actions that we are already doing. Um, chapter 16 is the day force chapter. We've made a number of changes to that. Just practically what it says in the book now is not what we're doing since we've launched the program. So we've cleaned, cleaned up that language a little bit. Um, happy to answer any questions if anybody has anything in the highlights that I've missed. Um, but a, a um, change in employee handbook is a very common thing. I hope to make it less common and do it less often because it's time <coughs> intensive, but it's an important book and help, helps us guide and create a culture for our employees that they know what to expect and they can come to work and en enjoy their time here as well. So whenever you make these changes like this, you put them on paper and then you add it, you slide it in a new book, get all the employees to sign it, or do you print a whole new book? Well, we used to do both those things. Now with Dayforce, we simply upload a new electronic version to each person's profile and they can view it at any point. It's also internally available on the employee information portal. So it's, it's more digital now than it is in print. We do give a printed copy to every new employee when they start and we will highlight obviously changes to that. It's not practical to necessarily print 300 copies of the book every time we make a change, but the digital version is accessible at any point. Any other questions? Have you noticed since he's moved over to the big desk that he's more succinct? I'm up, yeah. <laughs> sits next to me. It's the camera. Is it the camera? It's the camera. Okay. I will, glad, I will gladly give up my seat to anyone from Public Works or Parks and Rec if they would like that. <laughs> so like these, the specific changes to um, the LPD portion, mm -hmm. and I, I'm just saying the supervisors will let should these be approved, the supervisors will talk with their teams and let them know of these changes and stuff. So it won't be left up to the individual person. And Correct. Once the handbook is adopted, then command staff will have a, a policy and a procedure that they follow to share that information. It will be cascaded down so everybody has an opportunity to understand it. Any other questions? Moving on to resolution 2024-08, a resolution authorizing the city of Laverne to participate in the National Purchasing Cooperative Program. Um, this is just an, another purchasing cooperative that's out there. 
the state allows us to participate with them and there are several organizations here in Tennessee that use this so it can be beneficial to us any questions moving on to resolution 2024 09 a resolution to write off uh, water department bad debts and you should this is something we do every year you should be able to see um, everyone's names and amounts in here if you know of anybody um, personally feel free to reach out to them many of them have been contacted by Fox you will see that on the spreadsheet um, Fox is a collections company that the city uses so um, and they've just they've not been able to um, collect on these but after so many years we have to write them off does anyone have any questions so the and I've asked this before Evan uh, I mean there's a couple on here that's like four or five thousand dollars are those just not even worth trying to go after and pay the I mean at this point when when it gets to this point there's been effort and it's just I'll ask you again next year. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. And then motion to approve the new city mission statement, vision statement, and objectives. And so from our planning retreat last year, uh, the city has been working on um, a new mission statement, vision statement, and objectives. This was all presented last month to the board. And so this is just a motion for us to um, adopt those. Does anyone have any questions? Once again, great job. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Now, Andrew, are we going to have a fire pit whenever we get to vote on this? Just right out here? We can add it to City Hall renovation sometime in the future. We'll add a fire pit. We'll need a renovation after the fire pit. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it, you know, uh, Vice Mayor, thank you for the, those comments. It, it was a team effort. I will revert back to the, the team that worked on this uh, for those weeks after the <coughs> retreat, but we're super pleased with where we landed. I hope the citizens are as well. Any other questions? Thank you. Moving on to resolution 2024-10, a resolution to authorize the mayor to execute a license agreement with CoStar Realty Information Incorporated. This is um, a piece of technology that our economic development director and I have been in discussions with for probably two years now um, as far as about their services and um, we think it can add value uh, to what is being done to recruit new retail to the city and um, this is a um, resolution to or yeah a resolution to authorize me to execute that agreement um, the maximum amount it would cost is ten thousand three hundred and twenty dollars uh, per year um, and there are funds in the economic development budget but um, we will also look at any discounts that they have um, with the ICSC recon event in May uh, because if they're offering a discount at that big convention we want to take advantage of that um, but this has multiple uses whether it's telling us um, number of permits pulled uh, for whole areas it gives us uh, traffic estimates comps uh, market data I mean it's it's it is probably one of the most ro robust systems that we've seen um, Murfreesboro just recently uh, signed a contract with them Lebanon works with them as well um, the chamber in Memphis works with them so um, we think it's something that can add value to what we're doing with recruiting new business does anyone have any questions Moving on to 13, we've got uh, appoint or remove board and committee members. First, we've got the Stormwater Appeals and Advisory Board. Um, we've got two terms that have expired, and um, I know I've spoken to, some, to two different people today alone um, who may be applying. We just have to wait and see for Tuesday, 
but um, Ann has been advertising this on social media. Jerry's had it on Channel 3, um, so hopefully we can get those last two ones filled. If anyone is interested, they still can apply the applications on the city website under Boards and Committee. And then um, we've got an FYI, which is the Beautification and Arts Advisory Committee. We've got one term that is expiring, um, which is uh, Laura Ward. Her term is expiring April 30th. Uh, staff will reach out to her to see if she wishes to remain on this uh, committee. And, uh, of course, um, they'll start advertising it as well. Moving on to, um, we've got two other items which were both discussion items that Alderman Waldron requested. Um, he is not here, so I don't know what all he wanted to touch on with those, so we will um, simply roll those to probably our next workshop, if that's whenever he wants to do those, and can go through and discuss these. Um, because again, I don't know what all he had for, for these items for discussion. Um, and then we've got Mayor and Alderman comments. Alderwoman Hobbs. Uh, just thanks to the Public Works Department, uh, Stormwater Department for fixing up uh, Arbor Ridge area over there, the road concerns that were uh, brought to us from our citizens. We appreciate it. That's, I've gotten a lot of really positive feedback, so thanks for your quick work on that. You guys did an excellent job. Very impressed. Thank you. And happy Easter. Yeah. Alderwoman Hobbs. As I was walking to my car to come to the meeting, one of my neighbors stopped by and said, thank you for getting the roads fixed. So I wanted, I told him that I would pass it on to our guys here at the meeting and it's really appreciated and it's really noted. And happy Easter. Vice Mayor No. As I was walking to my car at the senior center, somebody asked me when are they gonna fix Stones River. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I add to these ladies, uh, not only is public works and everybody, parks and rec, library, planning, everybody, all the department heads, all you folks are doing a, a phenomenal job. Even Bruce over here. Even Bruce. Even oh, Bruce. Bruce. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. But uh, I know as a, the title of vice mayor and as a tax-paying citizen, I appreciate it, everything you do. Well, I want to um, first off thank all of the, the staff, whether it's police and fire, parks, library, for a fun time with our uh, the Easter uh, drive through And um, we had like a two-hour wait with this. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts was blocked, at least that's what Conrad told me. Um, couldn't pull in, so on yeah. So it was um, massive turnout. So we will work on that for next year to get people through quicker. But still, it was smiling faces. People were not upset, and um, we had a lot of, of fun. The kids uh, popped out with their golden eggs, and I mean, they they really liked it. So we got a basket left. We have one basket left. Yes. Wow. It was the nine twelve. 912. Well, if you have the golden egg and the coupon, contact Parks and Rec. Um, but it, it was it was a fun time. So um, very much want to thank all the staff that was involved with that because there's a lot even behind the scenes that people don't see to make that happen. So thank you to everybody. Um, and just thank you to our staff for everything you do. Um, and I'll even take it a step further and even to Evan Cope, who uh, sometimes gets thrown under the bus for stuff. <laughs> So we appreciate you guys, and uh, happy spring break. Call this meeting adjourned.